Whiskey Jason here, whiskey from the viewpoint of an American over here, reviewing rare and exotic whiskeys. Today I have some, something from Kanuska, or is it not from Kanuska? I'm not confused, but I'm not really happy with the way they labeled this bottle. Kanuska, the Oki, the Oki pot still. Now this is not single malt. This is unmalted and malted barley. And what percentage? I don't know. This was not made at the Kanuska distillery. It was made at the sister distillery, which is older, and that's the Hiochiki, H-I-O-K-I, Hiochi distillery. It was then actually transferred into new American white oak barrels and used bourbon barrels and brought to the warehouses of Kanuska. Whiskey Base 244785 over here in Germany has a recommended retail price of 109 euros and is about three and a half years of age. So the sister distillery of Kanuska is Hioki, and Hioki has a lot of capacity. Uh, they usually make the Shoshu, but the Shoshu uh, has been declining in popularity, so they started making gin there. And even that is not as that hasn't totally taken up all the capacity. So they installed pot stills and maybe even column stills so they can make grain whiskey there at Hioki. Now what they did is they made a grain whiskey according to the Scottish regulations because it's not 100% malted barley in a pot still. It's more the Irish style of pot still whiskey. So unmalted and malted barley. Now, if they're using the same rules as they do in Ireland, that means at least 30% unmalted and at least 30% malted barley. Everything else is more or less depends on who wants to do it. And up to 5% other grains, maybe oats, maybe corn, maybe rye, maybe wheat, whatever. All right. So um, I like the bottle design. I like this. Um, Diageo actually is the, one of the um, minority investors that have a good stake in the company, and they're doing distribution. That's why Japanese whiskeys from uh, Kanoska have made it over to Germany so quickly, is what I'm going to say. This is the third Kanoska I've actually done so far in the last two years, because um, at the beginning of this year, the end of last year, I actually did the single malt. It's just called the Kanoska Single Malt Japanese Whiskey. No other name. It's apparently the core range. And before that, um, this is 48%. This was 72 euros. This has 51% um, alcohol. This is 109 euros. And I did a limited edition from Konoska, um, the 2022 version, with 59% ABV. So now this has um, those uh, shoshu casks used in here. Shoshu is actually from rice. It can be from barley, can be from sweet potatoes, can be a lot of different things. Usually um, bottled at 25 to 35%. And uh, this company here, at least the grandfather of the guy who has this here, um, they actually, no, it's not even on here. Uh, they actually produce the mellow shoshu because they aged it in barrels. So at least for a while here. Okay. So, um, I feel a tiny little bit misled by this name. If you're going to it's it's like okay, I distilled something at Kaninvi, but then I put on the label Balvini Kaninvi. Now, if I go and look at a lot of things in the space side, I'm going to see here um whatever Glenfiddich. Nay, it was not it was Glenlivet, I'm sorry. So, it's, let's say it's then um what did we have here? An old one. Uh, I know what I'm thinking of, but I let's just say it's going to be here. Balvini Glenlivet. That's that Glenlivet was the entire region. It has nothing to the region here. It says Kanuska, very big at the top, and then so much smaller. Hioki, pot still Japanese whiskey. So Japanese whiskey does not recognize pot still. That's actually a. Um, a little bit of a wink towards the Irish whiskey industry. Now, when I smell this, the very first time I smelled it, I was like, hey, it smelled like bourbon because of the virgin oak. There's a lot of virgin oak on here. Then I was like, I smelled it again. It's like, no, nah, that's not bourbon. That's almost bourbon. That's Jameson Black Barrel. What they do in the Jameson Black Barrels is they take grain whiskey. Um, there is a blended Irish whiskey, single pots, uh, sorry, single malt, and um, 
grain whiskey, put it together, and put it in a rejuvenated bourbon cask. So they recharred it, and I'm getting a lot of that char here. Um, often the uh, sap in the barrels will, under the char, turn into a tiny little bit of a like model plain glue moment. That's what I'm getting here as well. This was this was only a new oak and um, American bourbon. This was in the Shoshu um, casks as well, and I get a whole different moment over here. This is a single malt. This has the ex Shoshu and the American white oak here. The American white oak is much, much less of a, it's like a little tiny spice, like a little bit of sauce. Maybe a little bit of uh, salt in your, in your gravy. This is the gravy. <laughs> so this is very, very strong. Uh, I would love to have the proportion of the, un, the unmalted and the malted um, barley. So if you could tell me that, and if you could tell me, are they using the same yeasts? I think they had the different distilleries are probably going to use different yeast sources, but maybe not. I don't know. Yeast is so important, and I do get a totally different feel, smell, taste here compared to that one. The bottles look the same, very similar design, and yet two totally different distilleries. Have I mentioned that again? And also two different sources, types of whiskeys. Uh, single malt versus here a pot still. Cheers. Mm. Half of me loves this whiskey. It's like, oh, I love this. This is like a good, uh, it's like a cheap bourbon with a lot of ABV, 51%. And then the other half of me goes, oh, it's just, it's just that virgin oak, a little bit of a green, a little bit of a um, acetone type of moment. And I'm really torn between the C plus and the C minus at the same time. Now there is caramel going on in here. This is an interesting whiskey. So I'm going to give it the C plus. But there are, I'm going to caveat it. This is not a typical Japanese whiskey. This is more of a Jameson Black barrel, almost on steroids. This is like a cheap, high proof um, American whiskey. If I go over here, I can go to um, Genoska uh, minus or hyphen en for English dot com, and they actually give me a tiny little bit of information here about this whiskey, and they say I have to go up a little bit here. Oh, I'm not even in single malt here. I have to go to whiskey, the pot still. They say that we have the following notes. Color is clear amber brown. Okay. The nose is butter sand. I don't know what butter sand is. Apricots, plum, citrus. I agree with most of it. The taste, marmalade. Mm. Vanilla, orange, almond. Okay, I'm going to deal with that. Finish, vanilla, dry ginger, cinnamon, and gentle sweetness. So, and uh, um, the ochi means place where picturesque sunsets. So I'm going to give it a solid C, C plus on a good day. Value for money, 109 euros for three and a half year old whiskey. So that's 35-ish euros per year. This is a D minus. This does not taste like anything I've ever had from Japan, which is not bad, but for that price, if this was half the price, I would maybe recommend it. But even then, it's just like, but it's 60 euros. It's 55 euros. Nah. At 109, it just doesn't have that flavor profile at all that even goes in that direction, I think. All right. Konoska single malt Japanese whiskey goes in a totally opposite tangent here. I get um, bright yellow plums. I get here citrus i get here uh, much more much more the yeast also here they have some interesting i um tasting notes they say uh golden amber ripened citrus fruit karim they say honey banana lemon tea and caramel under the palate
it is a single malt. It has some great, some very nice flavors. I didn't want to say great, nice, but it's still young. There's still a little bit of bite. This is 51%, this is 48%. There's a little bit of a yeasty moment going on in there. It says here, sunset taste. What is sunset as a taste? With ginger, I get the ginger now. Ginger, honey, slightly smoked nuts. Don't get any smoke whatsoever. It was a sweet aroma as a finish. There's butter with a mild and long finish. Totally do two different products from two different distilleries. Why have the same name on both of them? Come on. Arr. I'm sure one or two people in the research committee or the boardroom or distiller was like, do we really want to put the same name on both of them? And it's like, ah, the marketing guys go, don't worry about it. We've created a brand with this and we're just going to continue on using that same brand with that. Are you sure? Yeah, believe me, trust me. Don't. Put the name of the distillery first and not a brand name if you have the brand name as a distillery someplace else. All right. So the 17 euro, 20, 72 euros for this, it's like, okay, good. This is a solid C for the taste. I do like this a little bit better. Uh, this is a very young single malt. Um, value for money, C minus minus. This is a D, um, some, even a D minus for the 109 euros. Now there are basically 40, 50 other distilleries at the moment in Japan producing whiskey that I've not tasted yet. And I'm not talking about new factories from Santori Global or from Nika. I'm talking about new independent bottlers. I'm talking I'm, new independent distillers. I'm not talking about Chichibu. There's, all, there's a renaissance of whiskey going on in Japan. And I've made it one of my goals. Not the most important goal, but one of my goals is to review more, not all, more um, Japanese whiskey here on this channel. That's why I bought this bottle, that's why I did the bottle share, that's why I did the video, that's why I'm excited to see what uh, Kanoska is doing and what other places are doing as well, because there's some good whiskey over there in Japan that we normally don't get our hands on. And so um, that's that. My question of the day, what is your favorite Japanese whiskey? Now, I'm, gonna see, I'm, I, I'm waiting for someone to write down Hibiki 21. I'm waiting for someone to write down Yamazaki 21. Um, so, Yochi 20. These are bottles we can, uh, we're not going to see for the next 20 years or 10 or 15 years from now. Um, what is a realistic bottle that you can get that you like from Japan? Thank you very much for watching, liking, subscribing, and telling others about this crazy guy over here in Germany tasting a lot of whiskey you will never see. Rare and exotic. See you real soon. Whiskey Jason. Bye-bye.